When we think of spanning tree topologies, we can think about different ways that ports can behave. So far, we've mainly talked about the links between switches. As far as RSTP is concerned, these are either point-to-point -point ports, which is a direct connection between two switches, or shared ports, which connect to a shared segment, like having a hub in your network. We've looked at both of these already. But there's a third type we haven't looked at, called an edge port. This is where edge devices connect. These are devices like PCs, printers, routers, basically anything that's not connecting switches together. Why is this important? Because spanning tree is there to stop loops. And where do loops occur? In devices that forward layer two frames. So basically hubs and switches. Edge devices do not forward frames, so they do not cause loops. So as you can see, there's no reason to worry about BPDUs, port states, blocking ports, that sort of thing, when we have an edge device connected. Now in the old days, that would be a problem because even if we're connected to an edge device, it would still take 50 seconds for that port to come online. And that's just wasted time. To address this, but even before RSTP was invented, Cisco created a feature called PortFast. It was such a good feature that when RSTP was released, it became a built-in part of the standard, which we now know as the edge port. When we know that certain ports are for edge devices only, we can configure them with PortFast. So let's see how that's done. Under interface configuration, we enter the spanning tree port fast command. Despite being part of the vendor neutral RSTP, we still call it port fast when using Cisco switches. Just remember that other vendors will call it an edge port. Notice that we're given a warning. We have authorized the switch to bypass many of the spanning tree procedures on this port in order to get it to perform better. This is fine, but be aware that connecting a switch here while port fast is active may introduce a loop into the network. If we look at the spanning tree details again, we can see that this interface is now listed as an edge port. It also goes straight into the forwarding mode, bypassing the discarding, learning and forwarding states. It's also worth noting that if this port goes up or down, it will not trigger a TCN to other switches. Practically though, what happens if someone plugs a switch into an edge port? Whether it's malicious or accidental, this can happen. By default, this might introduce a loop into the network, which is of course very bad. Does this mean that port fast is just too risky to use? Not necessarily. There's another feature that came along with port fast called BPDU guard. Now, as far as I know, this is not on the exam, but I feel it's too important not to mention it, at least briefly. So imagine we have configured an edge port with port fast and we connect a workstation. To be safe, we also configure BPDU guard. Then someone comes along, disconnects the workstation and connects a switch. When the new switch is connected, it will start sending BPDUs. The original switch will see this and it will think, hang on, that's not right. There must be a switch connected. The port will then lose its edge port status and it will become a regular port. In this way, our network is still protected from loops. I have a couple of trickier questions for you this time. You might need to do some of your own research on these ones, but don't worry, it'll be time well spent.